everyone. How are you doing? <clears throat> I know that you all are doing well and you all are studying well. Welcome to the class 10th syllabus. Now, guys, after 10th, you will be in 11th class. So it's my suggestion that you will be learning the detailed version of 9th and 10th syllabus in 11th and 12th. So whatever you do, just do it in a better way so that your all concepts are clear. So let's start the very first chapter, life processes. I'm going to share my screen before I say anything. I suppose I uh, introduced myself. I'm Anjali Ahuja, your bio teacher. Okay, so um, I suppose you can see my screen. I'm uh, I, this is a presentation about the life process chapter. Okay. Now, guys, if I ask you a question that there are so many living organisms nearby you, there is a lizard, a cockroach, an insect, a plant. Mm. you, your friend, all the living creature that is on the earth. Now, if I tell you guys, <clears throat> think about all the points that you feel they are common in all living organisms. What will you say? What is common between a lizard, a, a cockroach, an insect, in you, a housefly or something like We all have something in common. We all have basic processes which are same. Yes, that's written on the screen. We call it as the life processes. We all eat, we all excrete, we all show digestion, we all reproduce. There are many activities. We all can move, even if it's plant. But the movement is restricted, but movement happens. These are all basic life process that is there in all living organisms. And that is what we will be learning in this chapter. Basic life process. Now, guys, now let me tell you, first thing in this chapter, what we have to learn is the first life process. Uh, actually, I even before I start teaching you guys, let me tell you one thing. All the uh, processes and everything in class 10 syllabus is in plant, in animal. You learn about the reproduction in plant, in animal. You learn about digestion in plant, in animal. So you have to learn it that way throughout your syllabus of class 10. Fine. So the first life process that we are going to cover today is nutrition. We will be covering nutrition in plant, nutrition in animal. In today's session, these are the topics that we are going to cover. Introduction to the life process and characteristic of living wing, though I have explained you that. Nutrition types, nutrition in green plants, <clears throat> chloroplast, factor affecting photosynthesis. Now, guys, the first thing. As I was telling you this thing earlier, <clears throat> yeah, so I was telling you this thing earlier that all the living creatures, they have something in common. I was giving you example of the organism itself. I was telling we all are showing nutrition, transportation. Yeah, transportation is the circulation thing that happen in all of the living creature. Their body, like if I talk about a cockroach, the blood is not red, but uh, the circulation is happening in the body. Molecules are moving from one place to another place because transportation is a must process. Molecules, enzyme, hormone, they have to move throughout the body. They need something. <clears throat> you have learned that in uh, diversity in living organism chapter also of your class, class nine. Okay. So next is respiration. We all show respiration, breathing, respiration as an exchange of gases. And the detail part of it, I'm going to teach you that what else happened in respiration because this is actually breathing. Stay connected. Next is excretion. We all are uh, throwing up the waste product of our body. So yeah, reproduction. Because reproduction is a must process on Earth that has to happen so that all the living creature just can be there for the existence. Metabolism is we all are just digesting. These are all life process. And other than that, I will say locomotion is also there. <clears throat> And this is also a very, very, very important life process. Now, guys, let's move forward. First thing that we have to cover is nutrition. I don't have to tell you a definition of nutrient, right? Process by which any organism will be obtaining energy and uh, nutrients is like that energy and utilizing it for different purpose in the body. And nutrition in different organisms, this is of different type. See, guys, if I just use the word mode of nutrition 
mode of nutrition means that any organism how it is absorbing and taking all the nutrients inside the body that is mode of nutrition so mode of nutrition in any of the organism it is of two types first is autotrophic i know that you have been learning this since your grade 6 it's okay <clears throat> we'll learn that and i'll tell you just the key points hmm. autotrophic and heterotrophic you know i always say bio is not a uh, english bio is we are learning that with the help of english why is a different language there's a different terminology that is used in bio we just split the word and then we learn it so if you're learning the bio all you have to do just split up the words and then you learn it so auto means cell it's a greek word cell and trophy means nutrition and hetero means other trophy is nutrition so autotrophic means when organism is making its food by itself that's autotrophic and heterotrophic means dependent on other now guys autotrophic nutrition it further used to be of two type photo autotrophic nutrition <clears throat> and chemo autotrophic nutrition so into the photo autotrophic photo means light chemo means chemical so when the food is prepared with the help of light that is photo autotrophic nutrition chemo means when they are using chemical for preparing the food is that clear now guys if i ask you can you give me example of the uh, photo autotrophic nutrition yeah green plant what other than that algae green algae blue green algae blue green algae doesn't belong to algae category algae is a separate category blue you had learned that in diversity chapter again if you have not learned just go through it it's fine syllabus was reduced last year and if you're watching it now you have done it okay so um green algae algae and this is a green plant algae and the blue green, blue green algae they are the one which are phototrophic so i don't have to explain you they are showing photosynthesis they are absorbing the sunlight so they are converting light energy into chemical energy it's all detail i'm going to teach you okay chemotrophic means when they are when they are using chemical what chemical they can use they can use hydrogen gas they can use methane they can use nitrite nitrate <laughs> okay so these are the chemical they they are using just that in the presence of sunlight they just prepare the food so chemotrophic now guys if i ask you a question can you give me example there are many categories of bacteria which are doing this chemotrophic bacteria so uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria this is one example other than that there is a category which is known as purple sulfur bacteria they use sulfur actually purple sulfur my handwriting is otherwise good it's just the application that i'm using right now for uh, bacteria so these are the example of chemotrophic one now let me give you information about the heterotrophic so guys heterotrophic as in they are dependent on another the one thing that you have to remember is how this uh, they are obtaining nutrition from the other organism this is further of three type saprophytic nutrition then there is uh, parasitic nutrition and then there is holozoic nutrition so i'm going to give you detail about it holozoic nutrition i suppose i have a space nutrition now i have a lot of space why i'm just writing on just one screen okay so the first one is here saprophytic nutrition into the sapro sapro means rotten so into the saprophytic nutrition organisms are obtaining food from the dead and decaying material so they are like suppose you must have heard that there is a dead and decaying material on that many bacteria living organisms are residing suppose this is a dead and decaying material and on to it many of the bacteria are living <coughs> sorry on to it yeah many bacteria and many microorganisms are living 
So these microorganisms, what do they do? They will release enzyme externally. They will release enzyme. We call it as extracellular enzyme, which is getting out of the body. And this is going to convert complex for them. This is a food material, but they are going to convert the complex material into simple form. And that simple form is the one which is absorbed by them. This is how digestion happened. I'm sorry, that's absorbed by them. So, saprophytic fight means to eat. Saprophytic. I have told you this. This is a mode of nutrition where organisms, they are just residing on the dead organisms, releasing enzyme, converting them up. And then, so by, you may say, hydrolytic reaction, in the presence of hydrolytic acid, they're causing the lysis. In the presence of water, they're just digesting the waste material, the decomposed one. I mean, they're decomposing it. So yeah, that's it. This is saprophytic. So there is an example, for example, fungi and bacteria. I suppose now that's clear to you. So organism, which is showing saprophytic mode of nutrition, they are known as saprophytes. Saprophytes. Now the next type of nutrition into the heterotroph uh, is parasitic one, parasite. You must know what is parasite. Parasite means when one organism is living on another organism. I, I mean, the, another organism, you must say, act as a host. So the organism, this is acting upon the host and just it is absorbing the nutrition from the host. So this is obtaining food from the host. Is that clear? So this host, it can either be a plant or it can also be an animal. It can either be a plant and it can also be an animal. Just remember that up. Um, you can think about a lot of disease, guys. Like there are stomach problem disease you must have heard in Why Do We Fall Ill chapter last year. Ascaris, ascariasis, it's there in the intestine. So this is also residing on us. We are the host to them. So that is also a parasitic mode of nutrition. You may say lies in the head if you have. That is also. And uh, on another animal also, ticks and mites are there in the plant. If I say cascuta amar bale plant, that is also living on the host. So that is also acting as a parasite. It's cascuta, T-A. Um, you must have heard about the disease malaria. Not heard, you must have learned last year. Malaria is caused by plasmodium, uh, which through the anopheles take entry in us. But point is that that is also a parasitic mode of nutrition, just living on the host and just absorbing all the nutrients. Now let's move further. further. Third type, holozoic nutrition, as the name indicates. Holozoic nutrition means absorbing the food, taking the food like an animal. Holo means as a whole food taken up and then digestion happen internally. So feeding like an animal. Like as we are eating the food, our digestion is happening. So all the animals, you may say, higher animals. But it is not necessary that only higher animals are eating that way. There are many categories. You know, you must have heard about herbivore, carnivore, omnivore. They all come under all the same nutrition. Now, if you want definition of this, you should not be ashamed. I mean, you should be ashamed that if I have to tell you definition of them. But only thing that I'm telling you is that all they belong to is holozoic nutrition. So they all show ingestion, digestion, assimilation, excretion. These are all different steps that are followed. It's totally fine if you're hearing this for the first time, but you will get to know the detail once I teach you. Uh, I suppose in the next part, we'll be doing that. So we are done with the basic information about the types of nutrition. The next thing that we have to do is nutrition in green plant. Uh, I have a blank space. I suppose I can just use it for writing nutrition in green plant. So basically, guys, we know that into the plant photosynthesis happen. Photo means light. 
and synthesis means to prepare. To prepare the food in the presence of sunlight. Into the photosynthesis, I repeat myself, light energy, this is converted into chemical energy. Now question arises, how that happened? There is a proper mechanism, machinery system present into the plant. Now what happened, let's understand that. Now point is guys, here, the basic reaction is 6 CO2 plus, it react with 12 molecule of H2O. It will be forming C6H12O6 plus 6 molecule of H2O plus 6 molecule of oxygen. This oxygen going to the air, C6H2, uh, this is a carbohydrate. Uh, basically, uh, you must have heard in different book, it's saying fructose, glucose, starch, whatsoever, they all are type of carbohydrate. Basically, glucose is formed, which is stored in the form of starch. Starch is the storage form, that's another carbohydrate. Now, one thing, if a question comes in your paper, that the carbon of the carbohydrate come from which molecule? So CO2 is the one. CO2 is the one that actually forms it. And oxygen, from where this oxygen come, it used to come from the water molecule. So these two questions come, come in your paper, that oxygen molecule kaha se aati hai, from where that come and carbon, uh, carbohydrate carbon. So I have told you individually, you will be writing it. Now there's a one pigment present in the plant, which is known as chlorophyll, that helps in entrapping these molecules, sunlight. See, CO2 used to come through the stomata, water molecules are also absorbed through the roots. Uh, three things are required, na? carbon dioxide, H2 and light energy. And uh, light energy is entrapped by chlorophyll. So these three things are coming from different ways, they react together internally. Now, uh, let me tell you one thing, photosynthesis happen in all the part of the plant, whatsoever is green. Talking about the leaves, they are the most green part. They have maximum chlorophyll in it. The rate of photosynthesis in leaves, it's maximum as compared to all the green part because that's comparatively having less chlorophyll, but photosynthesis happens. Clear? Now talking about the leaves, to which we call it as the kitchen of the cell. Kitchen of the plant. You know what, guys? Into the leaves, there are certain parenchymatous cells. Parenchyma, you have learned in tissues chapter in your last class. There are certain parenchymatous cells present, which are known as mesophyll cells. This is the actual place where photosynthesis happens. Mesophyll cells are like a normal cell, but the chlorophyll, sorry, chloroplast content in them is so high. They have a lot of chloroplast in them, and this is the place where photosynthesis happens. Now, let me show you a diagram here. This is like a cross section. We suppose this is a leaf and they have cut a little section of the leaf and magnified it under the microscope like the 3D image. Now, what they are telling, now very externally, it will be having epidermis. Obviously, cuticle is present above epidermis. Like you must have seen on the leaf, there's a membrane kind of layer coming out. That's epiderm That's cuticle, which is released by epidermis. Now, below that, there are mesophyll cells present. There are two types of mesophyll. One is palisade and one is spongy. Palisade seems to be like a very compact and designed one present in a proper way. But spongy is the one that's present like randomly. That cells are not properly present and they do not have proper packing. Reason being, uh, because, because of the spongy nature, they will be having air spaces in them, which is not there in this case. So this into the, into the spongy one, there will be air spaces present. And through air spaces, gaseous exchange can happen because whenever stomata is present, like suppose this is a leaf, stomata will be present on the lower surface of the leaf. There will be the spongy mesophyll and stomata, through stomata, gaseous exchange happen. So gases need space to move. So that's why spongy will be there. I hope that's now you're getting my point. Yeah, so into the, this is the middle vein of the leaf, the middle vein, this one. So into them, uh, vascular tissues are present. Vascular tissue means the one that helps in conduction of water and food. So xylem is, and phloem is present in the vein. Even, the, uh, even into the leaves, now, then vein will further be having branches here. So there also the xylem flowing tissues are present. So now let's talk about the mesophyll cells. Here photosynthesis happened. And into them, the number of chloroplast is maximum. 100,000 of chloroplast are present in them. Okay, 
So now we know that reaction happened in chloroplast. Now let's understand the structure of the chloroplast. Okay, guys. Now talking about the chloroplast structure, you have learned that in your eighth class, ninth class. I suppose you're going to skip this video too because you know the structure of chloroplast, but it's my duty to teach you. So chloroplast will be having two covering or you may say two layers. Yeah, external and internal membrane. And I'm bad in drawing. No, I'm not bad in drawing on the paper though. But it's fine. This is the new time. <laughs> okay, so this is outer membrane. This is internal membrane space. And then this is inner membrane. The two most important thing into the chloroplast are stroma and grana. Grana and stroma. People get confused at this point also. Granum is singular and grana is plural. Stroma is the same. Okay. So now. Grena appears to be like a stack of coin, like a pile of coin. One over one over one, like that. Way. Let me show you. Yeah, you see the diagram on the right side. This is a video I'm going to show you. Like this. Stack of coin. Okay. So the stack of coin and here also this is present. And now this grana, it appears to be like a stack of coin and one coin of this is structure, like suppose this is one coin, one coin is known as thylakoid. So coin, a coin is the thylakoid, like one coin like this, this is a thylakoid and all the coins together, we call it as the grana. So these are the place where a part of the reaction happened mainly into the thylakoid itself. Now, all the grana, they are connected to each other. You'll find many grana as you see in the video also. In the picture here right now, I'm going to show you this video though. So basically point is that they're connected by each other and we call it as stroma lamellae. We also call it as thread channels. Thread channels. So they're connected with each other that we call it as a thread channel. And now guys, the fluid part externally, it is known as stroma. Now, other thing, I don't have to tell you about the chloroplasts. They have their own DNA. They, are, they have their own ribosome. They have their own protein. We have learned that in the cell chapter last year, right? So I don't have to mention. I'm telling you these parts because this is a place where photosynthesis happens. Now, guys, photosynthesis used to happen in two steps. Light reaction and dark reaction. Let me just write it up there. Photosynthesis used to happen in two steps, light reaction and dark reaction. One thing, light reaction that always happen in the presence of sunlight. Dark reaction do, do not require sunlight. People get confused at this point whether dark reaction happen in the nighttime only, but nothing like that. Dark reaction happen throughout the time, daytime, nighttime, anytime. It's just that it is not using sunlight. Fair enough. Now we have to understand these points in detail. Guys, I have a picture to explain you here. This is a balancing diagram between light and dark reaction. Into the light reaction here, see, uh, on the left side, this is light reaction and this is dark reaction, right? Into the light reaction, what happened? Energy is formed. Like I'm going to write it up there first, light reaction and here dark reaction. So what happened into the light reaction, energy is formed in the form of chemical ATP and NADPH, or you also call it as NADH. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. That's energy currency. It is formed in the mitochondria and in the chloroplast. NADH is another molecule that also helps in ATP formation. Guys, NADP words it is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate nicotinamide dinucleotide phosphate. This is the molecule that helps in ATP formation. Where we present it, we ATP. It's got kuch kaam hi nahi. It doesn't have any work. It will be forming, forming only ATP. At a time, this molecule, it is able to form three ATP. So if there is an ADPH, it will be reacting and further forming three ATP more. That's it. This is the only work it is doing. Now, into the light reaction, energy is formed plus oxygen is formed. This oxygen go into the air. 
and this energy go into the dark reaction. And there, this energy in the dark reaction is helping in the formation of the product carbon. This energy is the one that helps in showing actual reaction where carbohydrate is getting formed. And yeah, CO2 is also fixed. It's not getting released, it's getting fixed. Into the react reaction, CO2 is joining the process, they are forming the sugar starch. Now let me tell you, in this diagram. This diagram is a chloroplast. This green part is the thylakoid grana. So here light reaction is happening. Into the light reaction, first oxygen is formed. And I have told you this in the very initial that H2 is the one that actually forms the oxygen. H2O splits up. We call it as photolysis. In the presence of sunlight, it is lysing, means breaking up. So H2O show photosynthesis and it forms uh, oxygen and it forms rest of hydrogen. So hydrogen are used somewhere, I'll tell you that in the same chapter. Now, into the light reaction, into the thylakoid now, actually many of the pigments are present. You know, chlorophyll is further of many types, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, chlorophyll C. Other than that, there are so many pigment present in the plant. Xanthophyll, carotenoids, all those things. They all are present in the thylakoid. A lot of pigment. We call it as photosystem. Photosystem means pigment system, a group of pigments. So here, one group, two group, and a reaction which is known as electron transport chain. It's fine, you want to learn it or not, but it is another reaction. Actually, electron transport chain, I will tell you Electron, listen to me. Electron transport chain is the chain where NADPH forms ATP. I was telling you, wherever you listen, the word NADPH will be forming ATP. So that actually happened with the help of electron transport chain. Clear? Mm -hmm. So into the light reaction, into the thylakoids, a group of pigment, photosystem one and two, they are forming uh, energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. They are forming this oxygen release and they are forming, yeah, by electron transport chain, ATP is formed and NADPH is coming from the photosystem. Photosystem also shows certain reaction inside because these are chemical. So now what happened? This energy, it moves into the stoma where dark reaction happens. Into the dark reaction, a reaction, a cycle happen, we call it as the Calvin cycle. You don't have to get into the detail, just remember the name. Into the Calvin cycle, RUBP, phosphoglycerate, and G3P. These are certain molecules, they keep on forming in between them. First of all, ATP and NADPH is joining the process. CO2 is getting fixed, further reacting with RUBP to form photoglycerate. That from here, RUBP is coming. And from here, here CO2 is coming. They form phosphoglycerate. They form G3P. G3P further form sugar and starch, which form the sucrose, sucrose and the rest of the RUBP join the process. RUBP, actually, RUBP, phosphoglycerate, and G3P, they all are chemicals. They all are chemicals. They have their name. In the cell, always a number of biomolecules will be there. So these are all biomolecules. So RUBP is ribulose bisphosphate. Ribulose bisphosphate, it's a chemical present in the cell. So one chemical reacts with CO2 to form another chemical phosphoglycerate. Then they form G3P by some intermolecular internal you know, changes happen. Then G3P molecule splits. Half the molecule form sugar starch and half form RUBP again. Like that happens. This is happening in stoma, where CO2 is also joining the process. And that's it. That is what light and react reaction. Now, guys, because you're an ask, I can obviously you'll be learning extra. So let me give you a little information about photosystem one and photosystem two. I suppose now, guys, this is uh, uh, very much clear to you. Uh, let me see. I think I have two slides on the light reaction. I'll accordingly use the space. Light reaction, this is also known as light dependent reaction. It's okay, guys. If you do not understand, I have tried my best. You can just go back and watch the video again. You will understand that. Light dependent reaction. Also known as Robert Hill reaction. Oh, so I'll simply say Hill's reaction. Robert is the person who actually defined it first. So in the short, I'm telling you this again, that into the light reaction, energy is formed, photolysis happen, oxygen is released. So how that story happened, let me tell you. So there is photosystem one and there is photosystem two, how they are reacting. 
First of all, whenever sunlight is falling onto the chlorophyll molecule, this is going to be excited. It is going to have the energy and this is going to be excited. So then what will happen? This chlorophyll is going to be excited and one electron is going to jump out. This electron is the one which is going to further, you know, just have the story. Now this electron, it is taken up by some electron acceptor molecule. To be very specific, that molecule name is ferrodoxin. Sorry, it's ferrodoxin. This is going to take the molecule. And ultimately, this electron is the one through a number of molecule, it is going to be taken up by the NADP and it is going to help in the formation of NADPH2. Now understand this, okay? Light energy is falling onto the photosystem one where chlorophyll molecule get excited. Electron is released. This electron is taken up by the electron acceptor molecule and that further help in formation of NADPH2 from NADP. Now guys, NADP needs hydrogen as well to form NADPH2. So stay connected. You'll get to know from where this hydrogen is coming. Now, simultaneously what happened into the chlorophyll second molecule also here, chlorophyll molecule and trap the sunlight and it get excited to form uh, excited chlorophyll molecule and electron released again. Now guys understand this point also because into the photosystem one here electron is jumping and used somewhere so it means into the photosystem one there is a deficiency of electron. Now photosystem second will be providing electron to it. Okay your electron is gone let, let me help you. So here simultaneously, it is also giving the electron. Now this electron go into the photosystem one. And in this process, it helps in the formation of ATP from ADP. Adenosine triphosphate. Actually, ATP is adenosine triphosphate. ADP is adenosine diphosphate. So one phosphate molecule join the process and electron help in, you know, move electron help in, you know, binding these molecules. So ATP is one. Clear it? Now, I repeat myself. Into the chlorophyll uh, photosystem one, electron is being taken up by the, after like, chlorophyll get excited, electron is accepted by electron acceptor. NADP converted into NADPH2. Into the chlorophyll second, uh, to help photosystem one, chlorophyll second here, chlorophyll molecule get excited by light energy. This is also excited, electron release, and this electron going to the photosystem one. Now, in this process, ATP is formed. That ADP reacts with 1,4-phosphate, diphosphate reacts with 1-phosphate to form triphosphate again. So now, photosystem second is also going to have electron deficiency. What will happen? Now, guys, understand this point. Into the photosystem one, this electron deficiency is fulfilled by photolysis of water. Here, H2 molecule, it split up. Four molecule of H2O in the presence of sunlight, this is going to split up to form four H, H positive and four OH negative. This hydrogen is the one that is going to be there to just give the hydrogen, okay, from the photolysis. Now this four OH negative. This four OH negative, 4OH negative, it further going to form two molecule of H2O plus four electron. And of course, oxygen molecule. Oxygen molecule is by the end, guys, listen to me. So this 2H2 is the one which further going to join the process, photolysis. Matlab, it is a free water molecule, which is not heated, will join photolysis again. Four electron is the one that is actually going to fulfill this electron deficiency and oxygen is the one that go back into the air. So guys, I suppose this is clear to you. That's all about the light reaction. I repeat myself into the light reaction, photosystem one and photosystem two, they are very important. Into the photosystem one, light energy falls in chlorophyll molecule it releases electron which is taken up by the electron acceptor that electron acceptor help in the formation of nadph2 from nadp and because from where this hydrogen is coming it will be coming from the photosystem 2 so from the photosystem 2 hydrogen and electron both come to the photosystem 1 into the photosystem 2 
chlorophyll molecule react with light energy chlorophyll get excited electron is released that electron go back into the photosystem one now during the process when it is going back it is forming atp from adp adenosine diphosphate diphosphate react with phosphate to form atp electron helps now photosystem 2 will also be having electron deficiency that all story is resolved due to the process of photolysis 4h2 o molecule break to form 4h positive and 4h uh, oh negative so h positive is the one which will be taken up by the nadp to form nadph2 and oh further will be forming 2h2 o four electron and one oxygen it's one oxygen so this electron is the one that fulfill the electron deficiency in the photosystem to itself and oxygen go into the air and h2 just join the process again that's how this is all story that happened in the light reaction that i suppose is clear to you it's very easy you can watch the video again very easy and this diagram is certainly very explaining explaining now let's talk about the dark reaction oh i have a blank space written up there so light reaction done let's talk about dark reaction you don't have to learn too much in the dark reaction you just remember dark reaction is also known as light independent reaction it doesn't require sunlight and this is also known as uh, blackman's reaction it was explained by him for the first time into this process energy is coming from the light here this is uh, this is chlorophyll uh, light reaction from there this nadp plus obviously atp also join the process okay that's written up there my video was on it i couldn't see it so atp and they are coming into the stoma part they are showing a cycle which is on a calvin cycle first thing calvin cycle is also known as c3 cycle because the product that you see it used to have three carbons that's the reason so co2 will be reacting with rubp i have told you this product earlier you can move back and see so rubp is ribulose ribulose bisphosphate this is going to react further to form three phosphoglyceraldehyde here and yeah they further form g3p which going to split up to form sugar and rubp again and in this whole process this atp is the one power of energies nadph and atp they are going to help you know for this process so you may say that reaction used to happen in three steps first is co2 fixation second step is utilization of energy as in atp and nadph and third is regeneration of rubp rubp and carbohydrate formation the product formation so these are the steps that are there in the dark reaction so i suppose this topic is really very clear to you about the dark reaction and this is what happened in the photosynthesis now there is a clear picture of uh, photosynthesis to you guys that where photosynthesis happen how it happens and what are the individual steps so uh, many students actually get confused at this point again on the dark reaction what this point is i have told told you dark reaction happen all the time in the daytime and in the night now guys the very last topic i suppose is factor affecting photosynthesis you can think about all the factor but few factor written, written there like intensity water soil ph carbon dioxide concentration temperature and other climatic condition so there are few factor written up there guys on the graphical format i have added light intensity carbon dioxide i suppose we can just uh, talk about it uh guys listen one thing in this topic i don't think they're going to ask as a detailed question but they can ask just one or two more question but that's fine you have to learn out so uh, first is sunlight if i talk about the light intensity so as the sunlight in, is increasing the rate of photosynthesis will be more obviously if the sunlight then it is going to be like a play two like a flat one because then sunlight um, it's not it's it will be very unnatural that sunlight is just increasing increasing obviously there's a play two in the afternoon time so that thing so sunlight you may say into this factor that is the ultimate source of energy and only 2% of the total sunlight that is coming on the earth is used in the photosynthesis 
Now I tell you one more thing, guys. You can add few point into this. You know about Vibgyur? Vibgyur is the visible pattern: violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. It's the visible sunlight. Visible sunlight is actually in one nearby four hundred to seven hundred nano nanometer. Or you may say to be very specific, it's from three eighty to seven sixty nanometer. This is the wavelength through which we see. It's all wavelength that I can see. You can see the screen. You can just read it up. That's only that wavelength is being used. The visible one. The rate of photosynthesis is maximum in uh, red and uh, green one is obviously there. Green and red region and blue region also. Actually, other than uh, yeah, green is least. Actually, maximum photosynthesis used to happen in blue and red region. Remember that. they have studied it by providing uh, individual wavelengths to the plant and then the studies are confirmed because chlorophyll molecule they are absorbing maximum in the blue and red region that's what we remember okay so the, the chlorophyll molecule are absorbing sunlight at this and they are breaking down the molecules they are forming carbohydrate they are making the molecules also but that's what we'll be writing do not mention the green color because green color is like least happen uh, blue and red region okay okay so yeah plants are green doesn't mean that it is going to show photosynthesis on green this is the molecule that emits green light that's a different concept okay so the next one carbon dioxide yeah so carbon dioxide is also like you know we used to say that level of carbon dioxide should not be too much because if it is too much that plants are going to be damaged they can die also there is a pressure on the plant so when the carbon carbon dioxide level increases rate of photosynthesis also increases but then if it is going going up and up and up then it is a problem then there is a effect on the plant we call it as the carbon dioxide fertilization effect fertilization effect means when there is a too much carbon dioxide in the plant that the plant is under pressure it's not able to just convert all co2 into the oxygen the plant can die in this case that's what it is so yeah you can say carbon dioxide this is a raw material for the plant and it is absorbed with the help of from the stomata into the plant and then you can just little talk about the stomata i don't have to give you that information and then yeah this points are enough okay okay so the next factor is temperature so obviously when the temperature is going to be just up and up and up all the molecules are going to disintegrate because they also require a proper sunlight temperature so with increasing temperature rate of photosynthesis is there but at a particular temperature maximum photosynthesis happen we call it as the optimum temperature and then it falls down even if the temperature keeps on increasing point is that a particular temperature is required for the photosynthesis now guys i suppose that is clear to you these are all the factor that are needed other than that you can see um light intensity acha i mentioned that water molecule also, also you can see that water is absorbed from the roots they are taken up this is the one that is helping in the photolysis so if the water molecule is least no oxygen will be there in the photosynthesis no oxygen is formed you can just talk about the photolysis point so what is the must thing and carbon dioxide i have told temperature i have told other climatic condition may you can talk about the chlorophyll that how much chlorophyll mol because this is a pigment molecule that is needed uh even the leaf type also like if the leaf is toward the sunlight it is going to get the sunlight photosynthesis will happen if leaf is in the shady place so these are the thing the leaf direction chlorophyll molecule how much how much it is a healthy plant so these are all the other factors that can affect but i suppose we are done with the factor affecting photosynthesis point and we are done with nutrition in plant if you have any doubt you can just ask now you know what you have to do anyways guys let's move back let's see what we have done today i don't think revision is needed on that <laughs> yeah nutrition green plant i talked about the cross section of the leaf i show you where i showed you where it happened and then chloroplast structure then how light and dark reaction happen separately and then uh, video i suppose is not needed fine just a chlorophyll structure you have learned that in ninth class so i have explained you everything though so light reaction here i told you light and dark reaction how they are balanced in the diagram and then i individually talked about them that in the light reaction what happened photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 is there it's just all electron story which help information of everything 
into the dark reaction here, light uh, independent Blackman's reaction, Calvin cycle, because the first product is having three carbon, we call it as the C3 cycle. It helps in, it happens in three steps. Now, the next thing that I told you is factor affecting photosynthesis. I hope we are done with this. Let's see how many questions are added. Where do plants get each of the raw material required for photosynthesis? I'm not going to discuss it. We've done that. You can read it. You can read it. And then how are plants and mineral transported in plant? India has element flow, I have told you. I have answered this. Ah. Okay, so further question, you can go into your module, you can go into your book and just study it well. I suppose nutrition in plant is very, very, very much clear to you. If you have any doubt, just put it on the forum, on the discussion board. All the questions are going to be answered on the website also. There's an Ask Expert option on the general website page. You can just click on there. And let me stop the screen share and let me be on the screen. So me, Anjali Ahoja, saying you, see you again. See you again. Bye.